ما شاء الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل نعم المولى ونعم النصير ربي شرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفكه قبلي أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي جعل الحمد مفتاحا لذكره وسببا للمزيد من فضله ودليلا على آلائه وعظمته ثم الصلاة والسلام وتحية والإكرام على النبي الأمي المكي المدني الهاشمي الذي سمي في السماوات بأحمد وفي الأرضين بأبي القاسم محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الهداة المهديين سيما أولهم أمير المؤمنين وآخرهم بقية الله في الأرضين روحي وأرواح العالمين لتراب مقدمه الفداء ورحمة الله على محبيهم ومواليهم وشيعتهم أجمعين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم مقتلتهم وغاسب حقوقهم ومنكر فضائلهم ملعونين أما بعد for the happiness of Hazrat Zahra'i Marziya for the enlightenment of the graves of Yom Al-Humin of the graves of the Shuhada, Ulama and Siddiqeen for the safety of the followers of the Ahl al-Bayt around the world and for the safety and the hastening of the reappearance of Hazrat Baqiyatullah al-A'zam Arwahun al-Fida please recite your loudest salawat All praise due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the one who is Ahman and the one who is Ahim. The one that gives us opportunity night after night to come and sit in that gathering that the Ma'asum Malaika desire to come and sit in. And every single day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows us with that tawfiq to come and listen to the majlis of Abi Abdullah. A majlis where, as we mentioned on the first night, that army after army of angel is awaiting in the heavens to descend. And when the last batch of them return back to the heavens, the others ask them, this scent that is coming off your bodies, we've never smelt anything like it before. Where have you been? And they, all, they reply to them that we came to the earth, we went to the earth, and we attended the majlis of Imam al Hussein. Those angels that are unable to attend that majlis go to the empty Husseiniya and rub themselves against the walls of that Husseiniya in order to receive barakah. A place where the ma'asum malaika desire to come. You have been selected to come every single night. The majlis of Imam al Hussein is that majlis where even the kings fall to their knees and sit on the ground. Where you do not see whether one is rich or whether one is poor. They have all come for the majlis of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. If we understood this tawfiq that has been given to us, we would never want to leave the majlis of Imam al Hussein. For us, we would be prepared from the first night with all our effort to be there to take part in every single moment of that majlis. But it is unfortunate that we do not have that sight to be able to see exactly what it is that the 
the barakah, the rizq that is hidden within this majlis. And we can only pray for the tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are able to understand the true maqam of the majlis and the azadari of Sayyid al-Shuhada. Over the past few nights, we have been discussing the characteristics of the Insan al Kamil. We said that the first characteristic was the one of humbleness. That the Insan al Kamil is totally in a state of khudu in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see how Amir al Mu'mineen addresses Allah in Munajat in Masjid Kufa. Mawlaya ya Mawlaha. أنت الخالق وأنا المخلوق مولاي يا مولا أنت القوي وأنا الضعيف You are the strong and I am the weak Over and over Amir al-Mu'mineen is showing that Ali is makhluq and Allah is khaliq Everything that Ali has is because Allah has bestowed it upon him Every single one of the ayma in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in a state of humbleness. And we said that we, in order to achieve that, must humble ourselves in front of the hujjah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we humble ourselves in front of the hujjah, that is humbling ourselves in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for they, their happiness is the happiness of Allah. Their anger is the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second point that we spoke about was the one of forgiving others. How the hujjah of Allah is so forgiving. He manifests that characteristic of Rahimiyat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within his wujud. And we too, in order to achieve a level of kamal, must be at that level to forgive others. But in order to do that, we must seek our own forgiveness. But in order to do that, we must first learn to forgive ourselves. And we spoke about Tawbah and Istighfar yesterday. To forgive ourselves so that we can then go towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and achieve those maqamat. Today I want to look at another characteristic. And that is the one of shukr. The one of thanks. When you look at the at the iyat, the du'as of Ahl al-Bayt could you turn these, they're a bit too sensitive. Please recite salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala The characteristic of shukr. When you look at the du'as of Ahl al-Bayt alayhimu salam, you look at Dua Arafa of Imam Al Hussein. Over and over, the Imam is thanking Allah, thanking Allah, thanking Him for the bone that is in His ear, thanking Him for every part of His body, thanking Allah over and over. And you often look through the Dua page after page. Alhamdulillah, shukran lillah, thanking Allah for all that He has given Him. And then you think, what is it that the Imam will ask for? And the first thing that the Imam asks for in Dua Arafah, after pages and pages of thanks, he says, Allahumma ja'alni akhshaka ka'anni arak. Oh Allah, give me that fear in my heart as if I am seeing you with my own eyes. Allahumma ja'alni akhshaka ka'anni arak. Or you take Munajat Shakirin of Imam Sajjad. You take Dua Joshin Sagheer. Look at every single na'mah that we are thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. The way that the hujjah of Allah thanks Allah. 
And it is one of the most important characteristics. All of these are important, the, the ones that we have mentioned before. But each of them standalone are essential for the others to work. You can't do Tawbah if you are not Shakir. And we'll explain why. If you're not someone who is thankful towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you won't have the tawfiq to do tawbah. If you're not someone who is thankful, you will not have the tawfiq to forgive others. If you're not someone who is thankful, forget about being humble. Because there's no way that you can achieve the maqam of tawazah if you don't have the ability to give thanks. In the Holy Quran, in Surah Al-Nahl, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, And it is Allah who brought you out from the wombs of your mothers while you knew nothing. And He gave you hearing and He gave you sight and hearts. For what reason? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So that you may become thankful. So that you, He brought you on this earth so that you may be thankful. And the main job of shaitan is that he looks to take you away from being thankful. He looks to remove that ability of thanks from you. In the Holy Quran, in the story of Adam alayhi salam and shaitan, you see when Allah says, leave from here, and he says, give me life until yawm al qiyamah, and Allah says, I'll give you life until the appointed time. And then he says to Allah, then be sure that I will attack mankind from in front of them, from behind them, from the left of them, from the right of them. And each of these angles that shaitan attacks from, they are different types of sins that he attracts you towards. We don't have time to go into that. But at the end, he says to Allah that I will attack them, Lord, from all four angles and then you will see wala tajidu akthurhum shakirin you will find that most of them will be ungrateful most of them will not give shukr they will be ungrateful towards you the first thing that shaitan does is remove from you the ability to give thanks to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so how is it that we become thankful? What are the characteristics of the shakir, of the one that is thankful, so that we can first draw a parallel with our own lives? The first characteristic of the one that is thankful, he does not belittle or consider any rizq to be small. Anything that he get, gets, he says, Alhamdulillah, he doesn't consider it to be something small or insignificant. Misma ibn Abdul Malik says that one day I was with Imam al Sadiq, salawatullah wasalam, who Ali. And a beggar comes to Imam al Sadiq and he says to the Imam, Yabna Rasulillah, I'm poor, please help me in my poverty. The Imam in front of him was a, a plate of grapes. So the Imam takes a bunch of the grapes and gives it to him. He says, Yabna Rasulillah. I said, I'm poor. I don't need grapes, I need money. The Imam takes back the grapes and says, Inshallah, may Allah help you. This man realizes he's missed out on something here. He says, No, Yabna Rasulillah, I'll take the grapes. Imam says, no, may Allah help you. So he goes. Misma' says, a short while later, another man comes. Says, Ya Rasulillah, how are you? Please, if you could help me in my, poor, in my poverty. The Imam gives him two or three grapes. Not a bunch. Two or three grapes. This man looks at the grapes. Says, Alhamdulillah to that Lord that provided me with, with the rizq. The Imam takes the whole bunch of grapes and gives it to him. Says, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, to that Lord that increases my rizq. 
the Imam turns to his servant. He says, how much money have you got on you? He says, Yabna Rasulullah, 12 dirham. He says, give him all this 12 dirham. The man receives the 12 dirham. He says, Alhamdulillah to that Lord that gave me more than what I need. The, uh, when he says that, Imam stands up, goes behind somewhere, takes off his shirt because the shirts of the Imams were of great value to people. He takes off his shirt. He brings it and he gives it to this man. This man says, Alhamdulillah to that Lord that clothed me. He takes it. He kisses the hands of the Imam. He says, Imam, thank you for all of this. And he walks away. Miss Ma said, I swear, had this man carried on saying, Alhamdulillah, I was afraid that the Imam would have given him the whole house. The one that gives shukr. A similar incident happened. In the time of Imam al Radha, Salawatullah wa Salam hu Ali. Again, the Imam is sitting eating grapes. A man comes and says, Yabna Rasulillah, I'm poor, please help me. The Imam gives him a bunch of grapes. He says, Yabna Rasulillah, I'm poor, not hungry, I need money. The Imam says, May Allah help you. At that moment, another man comes in, says, Yabna Rasulillah, help me. The Imam gives him a single grape. He takes that grape, says, Alhamdulillah. The Imam gives him the bunch of grapes. Says, Alhamdulillah. The Imam gives him the bowl of grapes. Says, Alhamdulillah for that Lord that increases what he has given to me. The Imam turns to his servant. He says, bring me a pen and paper. He takes the pen and paper and he writes the whole orchard to as a gift to this man. This man says, Alhamdulillah. The Imam says, and add all of the surrounding lands around that orchard for this man. The more you, and at the bottom of that paper, the Imam wrote one line. لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you thank me, I will give you more. The first man says, Ya Ibn Rasulillah, I was the poor one, I was the destitute one. The Imam says to him, Allah says in the Holy Quran, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِن كَفَرْتُمْ you received something, you did kufran or na'mah. And so you receive nothing. The more one thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more Allah gives. But if you turn your nose up at the smallest of rizq that Allah gives you, He will take away all the greatness. There's a man eating an apple. He eats half of it. He throws the rest away. The Imam looks at him and says, Why are you doing kufran or na'mah? We do that all the time. Eat half an apple, I don't want any more. Especially when it's niyaz or tabarruk at the mosque. Yeah? Because then we haven't bought it with our own money, so who cares, huh? <laughs> but yet that tabarruk, on whose name it has been given, is more valuable than any apple or any banana that you could have bought with your own money. We eat half of it, take a can of drink, drink half of it, it's thrown there, a bottle of water thrown there, chai is drunk half. All of this is kufranu na'mah. The na'mah that is being bestowed upon you. Every time you do it, it will cause a tughayyirun na'am. The people of Sabah, are a perfect example of that. Say the shuhada is leaving Mecca. Having given that khutbah in the morning, he's leaving. Along the way, he meets Aba Hiram. Aba Hiram says, Who is it that leaves Mecca during the Hajj? Imam al Hussein looks towards him and says, Abu Hiram, they took our wealth from us and we were patient. Ya'ni Fadak says they attacked our honor we were patient meaning swearing at Amirul Mu'mineen but now Abu Hiram they are after our blood so we have left oh Abu Hiram know this much they will kill me but a nation shall rise that will overthrow them and will, and will humiliate them worse than the people of Sabah. 
And then the Imam proceeds to tell Abu Haram about the people of Sabah. Says the, the kingdom of Sabah was based around 12 cities. Each of them more affluent than the next. The people of Sabah, each of them, for each city, they received a prophet. Twelve prophets went in total. They belied all of them. They ignored all of them. Through the kingdom ran a river by the name of Tharfar. And from it they had created irrigation channels to irrigate their lands. And so their gardens were green. The fruit and the yield of their gardens and the food that they had was plenty. There was so much food that the people of Sabah, not knowing what to do with all of this surplus food, began to wipe their children's backsides with pieces of bread. And they carried on for years, wiping their children's backsides with bread and they would wipe them and they would throw it on a pile after some years this pile grew huge of feces covered bread one of the awliya of allah was walking past one day when he saw a lady wiping her child's backside with bread he said to her do you not fear allah this is a rizq from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're using it to clean your child's backside she said to him that what does it matter as long as we have the tharthar everything will be fine we have plenty of food allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hated her word so much that he sent a drought to the people of sabah the tharthar was cut off dried out every orchard every farmland all destroyed famine fell upon the people of sabah they had nothing to eat they were dying so they had to do what? That pile of feces covered bread that they had gathered for years, they began to ration it out to each other to eat. When you do kufran and na'ma, Allah changes everything. People sit down to eat, wherever they may be, Especially in the Husseini, oh, this food is too oily, oh, this is not nice, oh, they, it's hot, too hot, too cold, too spicy, not spicy enough. We're never happy. And every single one of these statements is a statement of kufran al na'am. And this society has been geared in such a way for me to constantly be unsatisfied, constantly be angry, constantly not thank Allah for the smallest things that I've got. The one that is shakir will thank Allah for the smallest na'mah that he receives, that others consider to be insignificant. But the shakir is the one that will thank Allah for the smallest of na'mah, smallest of rizq that he gets. Not complain all the time. But rather, not only will he be thankful for those blessings, but he will tell people about those blessings. Not in a bragging way, but in a way that the people understand. فَأَمَّا بِنَعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثِ those na'mah that your Lord has bestowed upon you, thank, uh, tell the people about them. These are the na'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why when Sa'sa ibn Sawhan came to Amirul Mu'mineen on the night of the 20th of Ramadan, and he said, Ya Ali, I want to ask you a few questions. Amirul Mu'mineen said to him, Sa'sa, it's not good. Uh, he says, what is it that you want to ask? He says, Ya Ali, tell me one thing. Are you greater or is Adam greater? 
Amir al-Mu'mineen says, Sa'asa, it's not good for a man to praise himself. But because these are the na'mah that have been bestowed upon me by Allah, I will tell you. Says Sa'asa, I am greater than Adam. Says, for what reason, Ya Ali? He says, Sa'asa, Adam was told to abstain from that plant, to stay away from that plant in heaven. That plant was the plant of wheat. But Adam could not stay away from it. He went towards it and he tasted it. But I, Ali, Allah has made wheat halal for me in this world. But I have never even brought wheat towards my mouth. I have spent my life eating barley. Even those things that had a small amount of shak in them. I, Ali, would never go near them. For this reason, I am greater than Adam. Says, Ya Ali, are you greater or is Nuh greater? Says, I am greater. For what reason, uh, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen. He says, Sasa, when Nuh, his people began to oppress him and they began to do dhulm on him, Nuh raised his hands and he prayed to Allah to send his adab upon the people. And Allah sent his adab upon those people. But Sasa, no, this Ummah has, has oppressed me more than the people of Nuh had oppressed him. But I have never raised my hands to curse them for this reason i am greater than Nuh. he says ya ali are you greater or is ibrahim khalil greater he says i am greater for what reason ya ali says in the holy quran read sa, 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 that ibrahim says oh allah show me how it is you will raise the dead and allah says to him that ibrahim awalam tu'min ibrahim do you not have iman he says yes my lord I have Iman but I wish my heart to be at ease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then shows him how he will raise the dead in the form of those birds in that in upon the four tops of the mountain but Sa'asa I Ali am that man that on a number of occasions I have said that if every single one of the curtains was lifted in front of the eyes of Ali Ali easy man would not increase by one atom says ya ali are you greater or is musa greater says i am greater for what reason ya ali says Sasa, when musa was ordered by allah to go and bring fir'aun towards the truth musa said ya allah send with me my brother harun for I have killed one of the people of Fir'aun. But Satsa, no, I, Ali, am that person that when the Holy Prophet told me to go and reveal to the Quraysh the ayat of Surah Al-Bara'a within Mecca, I, Ali, am that person that there was no house in Mecca that had not had a dead person as a result of the sword of Ali ibn Abi Talib. But Sasa, I never questioned the Prophet. I walked into the precincts of the Kaaba. I walked through them. I climbed to the top of the I revealed the ayat of Surah Al-Bara'a. Sasa, I came down. They parted their ways. I walked through them. I looked into their eyes. I saw fear. But I looked into my heart and I found peace. For this reason, I am greater than Musa. So, Says, Ya Ali, are you greater or is Isa greater? Says, I am greater. For what reason, Ya Ali? Says, Sasa, when Maryam began to feel the pains of labor against the, uh, in the precincts of Bayt al-Maqdas, she went and she held on to the Bayt and she beseeched the Lord of the Bayt. Oh Allah, for the sake of the child within my womb, ease the pains of my labor. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to her, Maryam, this is a place of ibadah, not a place of wilada. Leave from here. 
her and Maryam was forced out of Beit al Maqdas. But so, so when my mother Fatima bint Asad began to feel the pains of labor next to the Kaaba, she held on to the Kaaba. She beseeched her Lord, O oh Allah, for the sake of this child within my womb, ease the pains of my labor. So, so rather than sending her out, Allah broke the side of the Kaaba, created a door for her, and invited her inside the Kaaba. And I was born inside the Kaaba. So, so no Maryam was sent out because of Isa, but I was brought inside. My mother was brought inside because of me. For this reason, I am greater than Isa. Salawat. Not used to Fazail in English, huh? Inshallah, <laughs> you get used to it. Sasa says, Ya Ali. Are you greater or is Rasulullah greater? Amir al Mu'minin looks towards him and says, Wai hakya sa'sa. Woe unto you, O Sa'sa, and Abdum min Abid Muhammad. I am nothing but a slave from amongst the servants of Muhammad. But Sa'sa, I will say two things. You take all of the wives of the Prophet and put them on one side. The pious amongst them, Khadija, Maria, Um Salama, you put them on one side. And on the other side, you put my wife, Fatima to Zahra. You tell me who is greater. Says Sasa, you take all three sons of the Prophet that died in childhood. All three of them are the sons of Khatam and Nabiyin. But Sa'sa on the other side, you place my two sons who are Sayyidai Shababi Ahlil Jannah. It says, You judge. Shukr of the Na'mah. Don't be depressed and scared with the Fada'il of Amir al Mu'mineen. For these Fada'il are those Fada'il that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself recites. These Fada'il are the thing that illuminate the hearts of the believers. And this happiness upon the fada'il of Amir al muminin You know what the sixth imam says? He says, if you hear the fada'il of Ali and it makes you happy, give du'as to your mother for she was pure. Being upset when you hear the fada'il of Amir al muminin not a good sign. Not a good sign. Not a good sign. Even in the time of the Holy Prophet, people would ask the Holy Prophet, Ya, ya Rasulullah, we, we don't know whether our children are legitimate or illegitimate because it was the period of Jahiliyyah, we were switching over. We don't know whether our children, this child that is born, was he legitimate or is he illegitimate? The Holy Prophet said, look, don't worry. I'll give you a mizan, I'll give you a scale. He says, come out of your houses and line the streets with your children and wait for Ali to leave his house and come to the masjid as Ali comes if you put your child in front of Ali if your child smiles seeing the face of Ali know he's legitimate if he turns his face away know he's illegitimate The first sign of the shakir is the one that is thankful for these blessings. Even the smallest of rizq and the rizq of the fada'il of Amir al muminin and Ahl al-Bayt, it isn't a small rizq. This wilaya that you have been given, that has brought you here. If you thanked Allah every single day, a hundred, a thousand times a day, it would still never be enough for the beauty that has been placed in your heart of this love. The first sign of the shakir is that he thanks Allah for the blessings that he receives. 
The second is that he is patient in the face of trials. Patience in trials. And we will speak about bala in the coming nights. And how the various bala that we have in our lives whether they're a barakah, whether how do they come, and we'll explain all of that. But there's patience in trials. The third characteristic of the one that is shakir is that this individual is content on his lot from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What he has received from Allah, he's satisfied with it. Alhamdulillah. He thanks Allah for it. And Allah increases it. But he doesn't complain, Oh, why does God never give me? Why does God give all these other people? He's constantly complaining about his situation. And the final characteristic is that this individual praises and glorifies none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other narrations, it talks about this satisfaction that the one that is most satisfied with his situation is the one that is most thankful the one that is satisfied with what Allah has given him the state of rada which we'll also speak in the about in the later nights that one that is rada is the most thankful in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one of the hadith Qudsi it says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says says man lam yarda biqadai the one that's not happy with what I have ordained wa lam yashkur lina'mai and he's not thankful for the things that I have blessed him for in his life wa lam yasbir ala balai and he's not Patient upon the trials that I send to him in his life, tell him, go find himself a new Lord. If he's not satisfied, tell him, go find yourself another Rabb. All of these things are there for our own Kamal. The shukr of the mu'min is not just upon his tongue. It is in his actions. It is in his heart. The shukr of the mu'min is in the way that he acts. He thanks Allah for his eyes by refraining from looking at haram. He thanks Allah for being able to hear by turning his ears away from haram. In in the holy month of Muharram, we're, we're, you know, controlled. But these halal and haram exist outside. You know, children, the innocence of children tells you a lot about the situation at home. So earlier today, the children's medjilis. And I was asking them, well, what things, you know, should you do to get closer to Allah? And uh, someone put their hand up and said, not listen to songs in Muharram. <laughs> yeah? Now what does that tell me? That in their house, for Muharram, songs are off. In the car, songs are off. For Muharram. But what's going on the rest of the year? Party time. Yeah? What sort of Shias are we? That we pick and choose, pick and choose. That Amir al Mu'mineen that we all love, and I've said this riwayah here before. He says, Man taraba qalbahu ala harfin min alat al ghina, faka enama latama aliyan ala wajhe says the one whose heart becomes happy at the sound of the singing voice 
or at the note of the musical instrument it is as if he slapped me Ali in the face and then we try and await the Imam with what face will we look towards our Imam all of these al-ajal, al-ajal that we say. We're probably going to end up being those ones that the hadith speaks about. That when he comes, they'll say to him, what is this new religion you've brought? We were okay with what we were doing. Go back, go back. They will write letters to him. Return home, go back to where you came from. We were fine before you came. Because you'll bring true Islam. Not the Islam that we have watered down and adjusted to suit our lives. But the Islam that is true from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A remnant of it remains in our lives, a sprinkling of it. But you'll bring that truth. The shukr of the mu'min is through his actions the fact that he doesn't complain the fact that he's thankful or the fact that he doesn't complain about anything shows that he is thankful look at Karbala all of these individuals that are there Abis ibn Shabib al-Shakiri has a friend in Karbala by the name of Shudab and they have been friends for years. On the day of Ashura, Abis comes to Shodab. He says to him, Shodab, will you do me a favor? We have been friends for years. Shodab says, what is it? He says, Shodab, will you go out and fight and die before me? Shuzab says, an odd request, why? He says that here in Karbala, I have nobody from my family. I have nobody that I have any deep connection to except Aba Abdullah. You are the only person that I have a deep, long-standing love for. And I look around at all of these mothers that are sending their sons out into the battlefield and they're sacrificing in the way of Abi Abdullah. I too want to give a sacrifice in the way of Imam al Hussein before I go out myself. So, Shoza, my friend, will you be my sacrifice in the way of Abi Abdullah? Shoza says, Yes. He goes out, he fights, he becomes Shaheed. Abis himself now comes out. As he rides out, Abis ibn Shabib al-Shakiri removes his armor, throws it aside, takes off his helmet, throws it aside, removes his weapons, and he comes out. They call out to him, they say, Abis, have you gone mad? The army of Yazid say to him, because Umar ibn Sa'id called out and said, Asad al-Aswad. This is the black lion. No one go against him one on one. They called out to him. They said, Abis, have you gone mad? You're removing your armor. He says, yes, the love of Hussein has driven me mad. He rides out. Umar ibn Sa'id says, nobody fight him. He says, how do we kill him? He says, stone him. So from afar, they threw stones at Abis ibn Shabib al-Shakiri. And he's killed in Karbala in this way. These individuals, this level of rida in the way of the Imam, this level of dedication in the path of the Imam, it's no small feat. I was looking into the lives of certain one of the certain companions and we'll talk about them in the coming nights but there's individuals there whom would stand in front of Imam al-Hussein and every arrow that came they would catch it with their hands 
Others would catch arrows with their face and their neck. Sa'id ibn Abdullah stands in front of Imam al-Hussein as he prays that Salat al-Khawf at the time of Dhuhr. And he runs left to right, left to right. When the Salah is over, Sa'id falls to the ground. Imam takes his head in his lap, says, Sa'id, is there anything Hussein can do for you? He says, Ya ibn Rasulillah, yes, just answer one question for me. Says, what is it? He says, Awa faithu, Ya ibn Rasulillah, have I been loyal to you, Ya ibn Rasulillah? Imam al Hussein says to him, Sa'id, yes, you have. 13 arrows were in the chest of Sa'id this level of Iman that's running from left to right and meeting every arrow with your chest the shukr of the mu'min is with his body with his actions but when you don't do shukr then that thing that came as a ni'mah for you becomes a bala, becomes a trial. That's why in Dua Kumail we say, Allahumma ghfir liya dhanub allati tughayyiru na'am. Oh Allah, forgive those sins of mine that will turn my ni'mah into a bala. It came as something good for me, but I ended up that very same thing ended up dragging me to hell. Your children are a na'mah for you. The Quran says your children are a na'mah for you. They are zinat hayat dunya They are the beautification for this world for you. But there will be many parents that will be dragged to hell because of their children. The na'mah changes. And there are certain sins. Abu Khalid al-Kabuli narrates from the fourth Imam. He says that I heard Imam Sajjad say, Those sins that change your na'mah are what? The first, kufranun na'am. When you have been given something, thank Allah for it. Thank Allah for it. Every single thing that you have. Musa alayhi salam, Allah says to him, Musa, thank me. Says, Ya Allah, I can't. Says, Musa, thank me. Says, Ya Allah, I can't. Says, Musa, why won't you thank me? Says, Ya Allah, because for every word of thanks that I utter, I would need to utter another thanks that you enabled me to say the first thanks. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Musa, this is the shukr I want. That you understand every single thing in your life is a na'mah given to you by Allah. The clothing, the ability to speak, the ability to see, the mind that you have. All of this is from Allah. None of it is from you. But to the moment you begin to believe or become arrogant upon certain things in your life, upon your children, upon your wealth, upon your looks, upon your hasab and your nasab on your descent the moment you are proud of them those na'mah you end up doing kufranun na'mah and those na'mah will become a bala for you those same good looks that you were so arrogant and proud about those same good looks will take you towards haram there will be a young man brought on the day of judgment. He will be brought in front of the people. He says, this young man committed sins of the flesh. What is your defense? He says, Ya Allah, it's not my fault. He says, why? You made me good looking. Allah says, so that's why you committed? He says, yes. Had you made me ugly, no one would have been attracted to me and I wouldn't have fallen into those sins. So the reply comes, so because we made you good looking, 
it attracted the attention of others towards you and you couldn't control yourself so you committed sins of the flesh he says yes it's because of your good looks says yes the caller calls out where is Yusuf bring Yusuf forward Nabi Allah Yusuf comes forward he says tell us who is better looking you or Yusuf how is it that Yusuf Nabi could save himself because his iman was in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you do kufran al na'am and you misuse the na'ma of Allah that he has given you that same na'ma will drag you to hell it will change the second al baghi ala nas the one that does dhulm upon the people his na'ma will change Dhulm is of all different types and inshallah I think towards the end we will speak in the coming night about Haqqun Nas as well Haqqun Nas is very important Shabi Ashur can you believe Shabi Ashur many of the companions have joined the Imam since Medina some from Mecca some arrived second third fourth Muharram they're all there Shabi Ashur Imam al-Hussein is saying, if any of you have haqqun nas on your shoulders, you owe someone money, you've usurped the right of someone, you've done riba of someone, you've done tuhmat of someone, says, go, I don't want you here. Shabi ashur. When a hundred thousand are standing on the other side, Hussein alayhi salam is saying, no. The one that has infringed the right of another human being, I don't want you. Go. Al baghi al nas, the one that does dhulm upon another human being, that individual does kufran al naam. The next, al zawalu an al adati fil khair, the one that leaves doing good, used to have a good habit. But he's left it. Used to pray Salatul Layl, but he's left it. Used to recite Quran regularly, but he's left it. He used to pray his namaz on time, but he's left it. He used to do charity, but he's left it. Says that person that leaves doing a good action, that will lead to tughayyir al naam The na'ma will change for you. The next thing that the Imam says, Tarku ikhtiyar al ma'roof. Says the one that stops doing amr bil ma'roof. Stops enjoining the good, stops telling people what is halal and haram. Says the one that starts saying, Oh, it's not my problem, that's someone else's problem. That individual, his na'ma will change. And the last thing says, Watarku shukr. The one that doesn't say shukran lillah, doesn't say alhamdulillah doesn't thank Allah for the things that he has in his life, Allah will change his ni'mah. How is it that we become more thankful? Amir al-Mu'mineen says, look at the one, if you want to be more thankful, look at the one that has less than you. Look at the one, those in society that are below you. And then thank Allah for what you have. Because no matter how bad you think your situation is, others have it much worse. And the highest level of thanks is in the height of bala, in the height of trials and tribulations. That is the highest level of shukr. When one can go to the broken body of her brother, Allahumma taqabbal minna hadha al-qurban. That is the height of shukr of Zainab al-Aliya. There are three shuhada I want to remember today. The two sons of Sayyid Zainab alayhi salam but also one child 
who is not remembered very often in our majalis. And that is a child by the name of Abdullah ibn Hassan. He is the younger brother of Qasim. Abdullah ibn Hassan, if you hear that Qasim knew Imam al Hussein as his father all his life and loved the Imam as his father, Qasim was three when Imam al Hassan was poisoned. But Abdullah ibn Hassan was still at the age of breastfeeding, he was still a baby. So from the moment he understood, Imam al Hussein was everything for him. And so on the day of Ashura, he's 11 years old. All the shuhada have gone, all of the Bani Hashim, all of the companions, everyone has gone. Ali Asghar has died. Imam al Hussein has fallen from his horse to the ground of Karbala. You know, there's the, there is a moment in Karbala that is the most difficult time. That there are certain a'mal that you can do to view the day of Ashura, but it stops at this point, stops those three hours that Imam al Hussein lay on the ground of Karbala, having fallen from his horse, no one would dare approach him. They say, no one in this world has the power to be able to bear that musibah. At that moment when Imam al Hussein was lying there, and they began to surround him, attacking him, a young child came running out from the tents. Imam looked over. He said, Zainab, grab hold of him. But the boy broke free. He came running out. He says, Oh, enemy of Allah, do you attack my uncle? He places his hand in the way as the man tries to strike the head of Abi Abdullah with a sword. Abdullah ibn Hassan puts his hand in the way. His arm is severed from his body. 11 years old, he falls into the lap of Imam al Hussein. Oh, uncle, they've killed me. Imam al Hussein holds on to him. Oh, my son, be patient, for soon you will be with your father. At that moment, Harmala seeing the 11 year old child in the lap of Hussein fires an arrow into the chest of the boy and kills him while he's in the lap of Abi Abdullah. What atrocity was not committed in Karbala. But all that was heard from the lips of the mothers was shukran lillah. Those two children of Zainab alayhi salam. Shabi Ashu, Zainab gathers her sons, both of them. She prepares them says, my sons, make sure tomorrow you are the first to go out and give your life for your uncle Hussein. Do not embarrass me tomorrow. Make sure you go out on my behalf and you give your sacrifice in the way of Abi Abdullah. They say, mother, we promise we will. The day of Ashura dawns, they come to Abi Abdullah, he sends them away. Imam al Hussein is thinking, the only children of my sister Zainab, how can I send you out at such a young age? They constantly come back to Imam al Hussein. Eventually, they say to Abi Abdullah, Oh, Imam al Hussein, our own mother is sending us, our mother Zainab is sending us. Abi Abdullah prepares both his nephews says go out and fight some of the riwayat say one of them went first the others say no they went together nonetheless they fought bravely the grandsons of Jafar Tayyar fighting bravely they kill many of the enemy combatants until the enemy realizes if both of them are together we cannot defeat them so they drive a wedge in between them separate both brothers from each other and now surround them them from all four sides they begin striking them with swords and spears one falls assalamu alaikum ya abdullah 
and the other falls. Call help us. Imam Al Hussein and Abu Fadl Al Abbas ride out. If Abi Abdullah goes to one body, Abbas goes to the other body. They lift the bodies of the children and they bring them back inside the tents. They lay them down. Abu Abdullah says, Where is Zainab? Tell Zainab to come and see her children because every Shaheed that would come. Zainab would be the first to come and do martyr around the body. But now Zainab is nowhere to be seen. They say that Zainab was in her tent in the state of Sajda. Ilahi Shakar. Imam Al Hussein, he lays down on the ground between his two nephews. He turns from one, one side. He holds on to one nephew and kisses him. Then he turns to the body of Muhammad holds him and kisses him oh my nephews that have gone from this world